We're at a brand new project this week in Weston, Massachusetts. What I keep calling a master bathroom, Mike keeps correcting me, this is a master, master suite. suite. This actually was recently renovated, is that right? When we popped out the sashes on the windows, we found tags on the side from 2003. We're assuming that it was renovated in 2003. So 16 years ago. Yeah. We're changing this design drastically. I mean, what was here to what we're proposing is wildly different and extremely modern. We're gonna get into those details, but today we're here to talk about demo. And you guys have taken an interesting approach to this. Walk me through that process. We have living space down below. We have a third floor bedroom up above us, plus bedrooms, laundry rooms all around us. And we're only renovating this one corner on the second floor. How can we do this without interfering with the homeowners and their day-to-day -day schedule? So we set up a stair tower from their driveway up to a second floor parapet where we're able to build just a couple steps down and enter through a window. So now we can go in and out, the, all the subcontractors can come and go. This is our main point of entry here. Yeah, and we're not gonna interfere with anything that's going on in the rest of the house. So what are we doing to separate our work zone from the rest of the house? So we started with shutdown mechanicals. We had the plumber come, physically cap everything, not a shock bite, not just disconnect, turn off the valve. We capped everything. We were able to dedicate just a couple of circuits over on like this back wall here to give us power while we're doing demolition. And then we left the lights on. The way it was wired previously, there was a bunch of, I think there was six or eight circuits for here. So we're able to shut off everything we don't need. Only have a couple of things running right now. Here we have a monitored security system. They set us up with like a temporary access so we can have um, the smoke detectors taken offline. Heaven forbid, you know, something went off while we're doing demo, dust likes to, you know, set off the alarm. Sure. The fire department won't respond. Right. And, you know, we're on site monitoring the thing as well. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, call them back here, done with demo this time, you're good to go. That's something we build into our schedule. So if we know we're starting demo, we're gonna bring in our the mechanical trades prior to- Week prior. Yeah, making sure that everything is, is truly killed and we don't run into any surprises. Two questions, how did you protect the ductwork from you know collecting dust? And number two, what about the dust that's not gonna make it through ductwork, but through the cracks in the door, the windows, the you know any penetrations through different spaces? Yeah, so we started with the ductwork, so any any um, duct in the ceiling, floor, wall. We use a little piece of Cobra vent, cut it to fit, and then we put plastic on the back side of it and just put it up there, just a friction fit. And that'll stop any dust from getting up into all the ductwork that runs through the rest of the house. We also have two build cleans in this area. We're dealing with right around 700 square feet. So the two of them, we have them set up on, you know, opposite sides of the room, running on high the entire time we're doing demo. So from you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and then usually the guys are stopping around 3.30, but we'll leave the build cleans going for another half hour after everything. Make sure we get everything cleaned out and the air is nice and clean before we shut it down for the day. So behind me, I see that you guys have plywood up in the windows, yep. and then this door yeah, appears door. to be taped off. Yep. So what's going on with the, these two details? The plywood up on the windows is just to protect them while we're doing demo. We don't want to be replacing sashes. Sure. And then the door into the rest of the house, we just tape that up for now. Because it's not being used as access at no. any point of this job, at, at this time at least. Yep. And then we also have like a zip door on the backside. So we have a plastic on the backside with a zip door. And then on the inside, we taped up all the way around. You made the comparison to working in a high rise. We are treating this as though we can't access certain parts, just like a high rise. You guys are doing the same for the trash here. I, I've been watching you guys break everything up and you're putting it in bags. Yeah, Why are you putting it in bags versus just getting a dumpster and tossing the stuff down in a trash chute into the dumpster? The way the driveway is, if we put a dumpster right where we need to, we're going to block their access to the garage. So we put the dumpster over on a section of the driveway that they're not using anymore. Um, and then we're setting up a trash chute like you would in a high rise, put everything, you know, break it up into bags, throw it down the chute into a cart. Down in the driveway, we've used sheets of masonite and covered everything all the way over to our dumpster. We wheel it over the dumpster, load it up and keep everything nice and clean. Now the argument might come up is though, well, why can't you put a dumpster there for the day, take it out at the end of the day? But you know, we have people in and out of the home. They have young, they have kids, teenagers that they're driving in and out. We wanted to be as least impactful as we you know, possibly could. And that was really big in the, the early discussions with the, the clients and making sure that we knew what their expectations were and that we wanted to minimize the impact that they had on their daily life. life. And, that, and that's another reason at the end of the day, you guys are doing a full clean of that driveway. So it's basically, everything's contained in here, which is really great. And I'm looking around here and I see two giant holes in the, the floor and some steel columns 
Is this in our wall? Or? Yes, but no. So I'm guessing that this stuff is right in our way. Yeah, so this steel post that we have here is actually smack dab in the middle of a pocket door. Sweet. That's not gonna work with the design. All right. <laughs> so let's see, let's, we're gonna, let, we're gonna call it C20 steel. because it's labeled whenever this was renovated. And we got another one over here. This one is C23. Is this one in our way? And that one is actually just outside of a closet, right smack dab in the middle of the foyer. So we could wrap it in nautical rope or maybe dress it up with some metallic paint? Anything you want. Probably neither are gonna fly though. No. What about the one behind us? We're gonna call that C22. There's a lot of posts in this house, apparently. <laughs> That's, this is a lot, There's so C22. A lot of steel. Is this one in our way? That one, I believe is gonna fit within a wall. And we might need to adjust the wall a little bit, but. So that one sounds like we can work with. Yeah. This one sounds like it's gonna be an aesthetic issue. This one here is a huge issue. Pocket door is not gonna work. So there, that says to me, there's two options here. We either restructure the steel, which can we do that? Not easily. I, you can do anything, right? Sure. But does but it make sense? That, and I don't that, think so. I mean, that's a steel post holding up a steel column that's landing on a steel column. Moving that would require us to add steel again. What's below us? Finished kitchen. What's above us? Third floor bedroom. Right, and those are areas where we're not touching at this point. Yeah. So option two is to redesign. Yep. We definitely have to redesign because of what we're running into. That's a difficult conversation, especially in this situation where these drawings are really developed. They've spent a lot of time. We've, they've made sure that their design is exactly what they're looking for. That process starts with us and the architect. This is always a triangle. It's the architect, the builder, and the homeowner. But right now, the last thing we wanna do is be like, hey, this doesn't work, your design is flawed. We need to start working collaboratively with the design team. What's that process look like? As we're going through demo, I saw these little hiccups pop up. Took a bunch of pictures and I actually drew them on top of the new proposed floor plan. So it's just little red boxes and go at HSS here, 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 and sent that off in an RFI over to the architect. Just kind of, these are the conditions we're running into. How do we want to start moving forward? So hopefully we don't lose any time. So the key there is get that information. Like you said, you were doing it while we were still demoing. Yep. And you were basically pulling points off two walls, figuring out where that landed. And you could see that on that drawing exactly. And you use the term HSS. In layman's terms, it's steel a steel post. post. Yeah. And it's showing that exact location or, or at least a rough location. And then we start that conversation as how that design is going to change. Yep. Now that's done through the RFI process. Yep. And Build a Trend is someone who we partnered up with to improve upon our, our project management. That RFI, Request for Information, is essentially our formal tracking software. We all deal with emails, we all deal with text messages, but this is an opportunity to put all that information around this specific issue or topic in one spot. We can always reflect back to it. Yeah, it's really easy to go back and reference it. Like when you're dealing with emails and texts, it's like, oh man, was it a text? Was it an email? Were you CC'd on it? It was somebody that needs it. So luckily in Builder Trend, anybody that needs access to the job has it and anybody can go in there and see what's going on. And obviously everything gets tracked and it's very nice, neat and organized. You're starting that, assigning it to the architect and the architect assigns it back to you. So you can actually follow that progress, just like an email chain. Yep. They are labeled numerically. So you, throughout the project, we can always reflect back. I had alluded to the fact that they had ripped some of the subfloor up, but you're actually ripping up more of it. Everything's gonna come out. Why? Because, uh, because everyone's gonna say that's insane, flatten the floor, yeah. do that, you're fine, your tolerances are, are okay. Why, are, why aren't our tolerances okay? We have a quarter inch shadow reveal between the floor and the bottom of our plastered wall. And what does that mean? You have no wiggle room. A 30 Every, second, everything maybe? has to be perfect. So you got to spend the time now. So that's just one of the many incredible details on this project. We're going to make sure we capture it and be able to walk you guys through all of them. As always, we appreciate you following along. You can follow Mike on Instagram at mike.hume. Myself at NS Builders. Make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Thank you for watching.